Hello everyone, today I'm going to react to the video I uploaded previously about my plan of becoming a red team operator. I'm going to share with you the things that I was wrong about, I was right about, and this is just to help you in your red team journey if you want to get involved into it. So it's been about um, 16 months that I published uh, that first video. And so hopefully uh, by now I have enough experience. Not really. I still have a long road ahead of me. At least I know what the things I should be focusing on from now on. This might help you if you want to start a journey in red teaming. So let's get started. What is red teaming? And to do that, I'd like to share with you a chart that I found on the internet, which positions each security assessment based on the scope and the details provided to the tester. So as you can see, we have red team positioned at the lower right corner, which means that red teamers don't have prior knowledge about the target. They are not provided any details or very minimal details about the target, but the scope is wide open. And the objective is to simulate real attacks. Now, as I started learning about it and reading some documentation about the different methodologies and frameworks, there is still some meetings that should be done with the client, uh, which is called the white team, the team that is aware of the red team engagement. There are also situations where for some reason the red team cannot progress in the engagement, then they can request um, additional access to be able to advance. And yeah, uh, it's not just like you're doing your engagement without any interaction with the client. Now compare this to an automated assessment like vulnerability scanning. In this case, you can run automated scans either using credentials or perform unauthenticated scans. And generally those scans target a limited scope of the entire digital assets of an organization. Uh, let's skip that for now. I guess it's somewhere around here. So what's the plan to become a red team operator? Well, personally, I like to practice on hands-on labs. I even deliver trainings based on hacking labs like the free hands-on OWASP top 10 lab, which you can find on thehackerish.com. I already talked about the Offshore Pro Lab from hackthebox.eu. You can find the blog post that I'm going to link in the description box. And there are many labs for that purpose, which are called Pro Labs. Um, the first one is Dante, but this is just an entry level for junior penetration testers. There's also Rasta Labs, which is a virtual red team simulation environment. And then we have Cybernetics, which is a Windows Active Directory lab environment, but it's fully upgraded and greatly hardened against attacks. So it's designed for experienced penetration testers and red teamers. I was able to do Rasta Labs, which I have a review of, but the downside is that the lab is shared with other players. So this made the lab a little bit less stable. Uh, people were just uh, changing the configuration of some objects inside of Active Directory. So when I compromised a user account, this account had additional privileges, which were not meant to be there. And so these shortcuts that were created by other students and players were considerably downgrading the experience. And so I didn't continue to do cybernetics. But before I do that, um, I think I first need to acquire the knowledge and the expertise to be able to finish those two labs, Rasta Labs and Cybernetics, because obviously these labs don't contain any walkthroughs. So to first build up the muscles, there are many labs on Pentester Academy that are targeted towards red teamers. And that's 100% correct. I made the right decision to start with this lab because it lays the uh, foundation of attacking Active Directory, which is used by most companies. So it's going to be present in every, or at least most of red team engagements. So if you go to red team labs, if you don't know what Active Directory is and how to attack it and how to defend it, then I would recommend starting with this lab. However, I think I'm going to do this one, Advanced Red Teaming Lab, directly 
which as you can see contains an active directory system with a forest that contains many child domains but i think they provide only 3.5 hours of video course material so i think these would be a next step but the first step would be to follow the osep course evasion techniques and breaching defenses because when i saw the syllabus it seems that it covers the different skills required by red teams. For example, we talk about client-side code execution. Which that is wrong. Um, OSEP is an advanced course um, dedicated towards bypass defense mechanisms. Um, it is a great certification to have, but not at the beginning. While doing some engagements for clients, I started learning how to bypass an antivirus because uh, it was flagging pretty much all the scripts I was using. And so this is where I started learning the different techniques that I later found uh, relevant in the syllabus of OSEP. So I think uh, from a learning perspective, um, start first with, um, let's say, Active Directory without focus on AV evasion, uh, and then move step by step towards this goal of, you know, developing uh, payloads that bypass uh, antivirus and EDRs, etc. Office, process injection and migration in Windows, antivirus evasion, application whitelisting, Windows lateral movement, phishing with Microsoft Office, etc. So I think this is the first certification I'm going to target. And from there, I will either go after the advanced red team lab. So I didn't 100% stick to this plan. So what I did was start with CRTP, CRTE, then the paces. Um, and then I started learning on my own how to develop uh, payloads to evade uh, defense mechanisms. So later, uh, maybe this year or next year, I'm going to attempt OSEP. Um, I think I'm ready to do it. I just uh, need to experiment more on real engagements and hopefully uh, all the materials that are covered in the course I will already be familiar with. And then the Global Central Bank Lab, which is a much, much bigger lab with a lot of forests. And then maybe I would then tackle Rasta Labs and then Cybernetics. If you are a established Red Teamer watching this video, I would like to see your suggestions in the comments below. All right, uh, I think that sums it up. Needless to say, um, a plan is a plan, but it, you don't have to stick to it 100%. You just need to start somewhere and then assess your progress and uh, the areas where you need to uh, work a little bit more, learn a little bit more and practice a little bit more. I think that's the main compass that you should follow when you learning uh, red teaming or pretty much any topic that you want to pursue. Um, it's really the journey that counts. If you're really passionate about something, uh, you just lay a plan and then try to work you your way and um, leave the journey. Yeah, so let me know in the comments below uh, what was your path and what do you suggest for me to follow based on your experience if you're a red team operator. And if you are just barely starting, well, I suggest that you start with Active Directory as I explained earlier, and then uh, move your way up to learn more advanced topics. As always, stay curious, Keep learning and go find some bugs.